れてるかな Burst, burst, They're uh, what? Oh, we got a little clip of this. <laughs> Hi, I'm Anna. And I'm Ben. We are Auto Save. Welcome to our channel. Today we are watching Oshinoko Season 1, Episode 2. What you just watched was our reaction to the end credit scene of last episode. I am big dumb and forgot to include it in the reaction because we were trying to get it out as soon as possible. So apologies. But last episode of Oshinoko was an hour and 22 minute long prologue of one of the best pieces of media I think I've been witness to in a long while. I think it definitely did the job uh, that it was meant to, which was to make people want to continue to watch Oshinoko and see what it has in store. It had me crying, it had me laughing, like when the babies were dancing at their mom's idol concert, like that yeah. was probably one of the funniest moments I've seen in a really long time, and it will probably live on forever in my memory. And it had me sobbing and crying like a baby as we saw the literal color leave not only eyes eyes but her hair and just how she was drawn as she died was it was one of the most heart-wrenching taking it was it in was a visual emotions. way they did such a beautiful horrific job at in a visual ma way making you feel like a soul literally leaving a body yeah. and that is cra a crazy feat to have reached yeah it is and i don't really know where we go from here. I don't know if I've watched a show in this type of vein or genre, you know? Where you go and get a prologue and then now kind of what's the story? But also be? the tone. Like, it, it, it's a very dark tone mixed with, like, so much, like, lightheartedness and psychological, like, aspects to it. Like, mm, what color. One of the things that we didn't really get to talk about because of the, you know, SD card length being limited last episode was just more in depth about the personality of I and probably a lot of people in a similar position as I, and maybe even not in a similar position. Hell, like I, like personally, in a really weird way, I was connecting to a lot of things that she was saying about not feeling these things for real or trying to lie and present that as truth in hopes that maybe one day you'd be able to achieve that, or maybe one day you'd be lucky enough to be a part of it. And maybe in like a even more specific sense while you're in those moments you're you have a sense of disassociation with yourself where you might be feeling these real things but you've already put forward that doubt of if you ever could so you don't know you're not sure if those things that you're feeling are real or not like what one of the highlights of last episode for me was man one of the reasons if not the only reason that we think I was murdered was because of that reconnection with the father of her children. Mm -hmm. And the only reason that conversation even happened in the phone booth was because I walked in on her kids being unsure of who their father was. Mm -hmm. And that whole decision to try to reunite them and connect them that led to her death was instigated of love, like from love and from care and wanting, wanting to the give best. her children something that she she realized probably in that moment, like, oh, that this is something they deserve. My children deserve to, to meet their father. Yeah, and I, uh, like, we've watched a couple of romance shows on the channel, or in, in general, and a lot of action shows. But what tends to be my favorite are shows that go deeper into that, into the mental of, mm -hmm. uh, of these characters, like the real people, because I... Unfortunately, I'm not an idol, you know, but uh, but what? they touched on a lot of like the intricacies and like horrors of the scene of being an idol and and being a person too. like a lot of my friends even like who are pretty successful and confident. They got there from faking it till you make it, you know, mm -hmm. and in a, you know, in a rearranging of words, I think that that sentiment could be applied to lying in hopes that one day you'll be able to get something out of it. Mm -hmm. There's something so um, blunt, but also on surface level simplistic to how um, I's kind of outlook was of why becoming an idol was right for her and 
her kind of inability to know how she truly felt and create real connections and if she truly loved someone. And when you're first watching it, you're like, wow, I can't believe someone feels that way. And then when you actually like break it down and really look at it, you know, after the fact, or maybe even during you were, you realize how um, realistic this thing that one said in front of you sounded, wow, I can't believe that. Uh, like, crazy yeah but then when you really like wow it's just because someone's saying it to you and maybe you might have thought that for yourself or you relate to it in some way but you know sometimes when hard things are said in front of you it can be hard to realize yeah how actually um relatable or realistic that is until you give it some time and maybe find some comparisons within your own life people you've talked to other characters and other media that you've consumed yeah I'd say going into this episode and the rest of the series, if I'm completely honest, I'm a little nervous. I think that the my my favorite things of last episode, I'm afraid won't carry over into the rest of the series because of how specific they were and how around Eye's character they were. Mm -hmm. And I'm hoping that like there's a lot of things that I loved about that prologue, but I, I'm hoping that my favorite of those things, which is that int introspection and like that further into emotions and ha how complex and complicated it can get stays. And I, I think that there's an opportunity for it perhaps with everything that's going on with Aqua and Ruby and their parental situation now. But I'm I'm nervous a little bit. Also, uh, when we were watching last episode, like two minutes in, I was like, "Oh man, I don't know if I like the art style just yet." Whoa! Like out of nowhere, like mm -hmm. I just fell in love with it, and I I'm all in for this show. Yeah. Like all the chips on the table, I'm ready. I'm ready. <laughs> I completely agree with you on like kind of being a little nervous going into the next episode, especially when you compare this to other anime, other stories. Oftentimes, there is a deceased parent or a parent that is not in the picture, but you don't really get, and you you basically just get introduced to the child when you start out the show. And maybe you get bits and pieces of that parent in, in, in flashbacks throughout the story, but you never just actually get the parent's like death and the relationship with the parent beforehand at the beginning of consuming the media like naruto fruits the basket there's tons of shows where over the course of time you know the parent is always kind of a part of mm -hmm. the story from the, from the moment you start the story the parent is an integral uh part to the plot and, and to deep within the kid's personality what's happening to them and what happens to them in the future but this was kind of one of my first instance instances i would say of you get that first instead of throughout the show yeah. of Oshinoko, we would see I and get to know I and how Aqua and Ruby came to be and maybe even learn throughout that, oh, they're reincarnated as babies, you know, yeah. but to learn all of those big pieces of information and see those backstories first it is new territory for me. Yeah, I, I, you know, I was talking to a couple of my friends in Discord the other day and I like I don't bring up the channel or anime too often but i i was like oh have you guys been watching any anime recently i just watched something called oshinoko one of them had heard about it the other didn't and one of them was like oh I've, i haven't watched anime in a while and the other was like is there a dub for it yet but um <laughs> but i like it's really hard to potentially recommend a show especially after one episode that's not what like i would mm -hmm. do typically i'd want to see how the series progresses and maybe even finishes first but I, I, it was hard not to be what I, to do what I did to being like, over it. I was like, it, it has something to it. Mm -hmm. And I know that it's an hour and 22 minutes, but like, you just, just go into it. Don't look at uh, anything up. Just mm -hmm. see what you feel like, just be immersed. Yeah. Cause it's something special. I think the series, um, has a lot to live up to in my eyes from that first thing we were given. And I'm like, come on, how well, you couldn't just give us that amazing masterpiece hour 22 minute and then drop the ball. You know, it yeah. has, you know, I, I'm expecting, I'm excited uh, that it is going to feel like at the end of the day, once the whole thing is finished, that it's a whole completed, really full, satisfying piece of work. Mm -hmm. And not just that the, oh, there was like this prologue movie and it was great, but the show spin off yeah. was, was whatever. Are we going to go, like, murder mystery now? Or are we going to go murder mystery, like, 
as a cherry on top with like most of it being a school life Slice kind of, of thing. life school what, life what uh, is what is like what is this genre what are we doing what's the plot now wh- what are what's the mental looking like for our <laughs> cast right now what's going on what is kana doing we haven't seen kana right, we've our, got a glimpse of kana in like the last grown up mm-hmm. ending sequence are ruby and aqua ever going to realize that ruby is serena maybe these are the questions uh without further ado though you ready yes Sweet. Only 24 minutes. What's going on? I almost half expected it to also be an hour 22. I have really hope this is the intro. I didn't get to fully appreciate it as an outro last time because I was sad. Why is Kana in like a dark warehouse? What a cool <laughs> intro. Oh, I love this song and, and like, so it's much. It's kind of scary, too, at the end, you know? I was digging this song so much at the, as the outro. Okay. <gasps> it's like X-Factor. Interview. Middle school. I like the music. So adventurous. <laughs> Aww. Butter singing isn't very good. Everybody's like, who is that? リコ町の愛に埋め込ん<笑> ああ。監督のところ行ってくる。ディレクター。お兄ちゃんは Oh no. Interesting! Wow. No longer as an idol department. Interesting. She took on the company and yeah. raising them. Powerful woman. I love her. Oh. あんな奇跡は二度も起きない。ファンタン病死に行かない。それに。それに、当落の電話があるはい。ありがとうございます。では、次回のご参加。ダメだった。<笑> You can't even expect your ability to be judged fairly. What? That was him? Oh my god. This is the the Holy shit. That's a contrast. How are you gonna get in the way of this, Aqua? Look at him, he's so unhappy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I 
She has the qualities to make it. あ、もしのねしかれるよ。え、何するき?ちょっといいかな。俺、こういうものなんだけど。え、いちごプロ、ビーコマチのですよね。うちのママがファンで、僕がいちごプロ。ちょっと悪い勧誘かと思っちゃ
God, she reminds me of um the wife in Chowder. <laughs> Truffles? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Medical University. <laughs> yeah. Makes sense. I love the hair. The strands? <gasps> Kana. Oh no. <gasps> I love that they kept the joke. She thinks that he joined yeah. the. Look at how happy she is! <laughs> you were her rival, dude! Was that it? I think so! No! Whoa! I love how they made the star 3D as if it's almost cutting into the eyes. Yeah. Okay, that was Oshinoko, Season 1, Episode 2. Ah, uh, what can I say? Expectations exceeded. Um, I know, like, I, I, I don't know. I, there's something about this show that I'm obsessed with right now. And, like, I, I just love it. I love it. I love that, um, it seems like there is going to be this, uh, school-like element to it that could maybe lean more into a drama or slice of life in some way. But there's still this, I think it's more a drama. Mm -hmm. There, there's this deep element that I'm really happy is still a through line from the prologue within this episode. Like, Obviously, this episode was kind of just setting the the story up of, of kind of what's going to be taking place yeah. in the future. What the plot is, uh, who they are now, and what their dreams are now, if you will. Yeah. Who are I, the characters that are... I think it did such a great job at showing us who the characters are currently without shoving it in your face. And while progressing the story and setting up for the future. Mm -hmm. Like, I can see, like the vision of trying to do that, but to actually pay it off in a way that has me feeling so many different emotions about just Aqua even mm -hmm. is like nuts to me. I um I said, I was talking in the intro about the kind of idea of giving that prologue, the giving the backstory to the parental figure dying mm -hmm. uh, before you really get into the story and how that could possibly change things. And I would say that if this was just what you started off with and maybe there was some other kind of exposition, some other explanation in this episode included uh, and you just didn't have that yeah. prologue, um, there were moments in it that it's like they knew that you were going to get emotional. They knew that you already were attached to I. They knew you probably cried. Like, the people yeah. that made this knew you probably cried in the prologue. And so the things that, you know, if you hadn't had that prologue, that you, when when Ruby gets dejected um, from that phone call and that feeling of, of why Aqua, you know, really doesn't want his sister involved in it, all of these things are backed up now by this emotional, deep kind of feeling and thing that we can resonate with and immerse ourselves in and understand. Yeah. Like we can understand just from starting the story out why certain things would affect certain characters or what memories they might be recalling even if they don't show us yeah and it made me i teared up multiple times in an episode that only showed me like twice anything of like i during her death scene yeah so i'm glad that you're bringing it up in big letters circled at the top of my page i have what if no prologue mm -hmm. um because i think that it was it's something to talk about I personally think that this whole season, let alone like this episode, could have been completely done and edited for the most part, and then they decided to animate the prologue. I'm not. I'm not saying that's what they yeah, did. Yeah, yeah, but, but I, I get it. I'm saying that like give all like except with the exception of a couple shots that they showed us of last episode, like Ai's death mm -hmm. and like the 
the, the reiteration of wanting Aqua like to be an actor or asking if that's what he was going to do. I th I, I really feel like I could have watched this as the intro episode mm -hmm. without the prologue. I'm so yeah. glad I didn't. I'm right. so glad that we were gifted. It's the, refreshing. Yeah. I'm so happy that that wasn't the case, but it's so interesting that they were able to convey such a like compelling mm -hmm. story with me kind of getting the gist of everything, even if I try to ignore everything that I'd seen prior. Yeah. I think we're used to this uh, very common trajectory yeah. of uh, slowly expanding our knowledge of the world and the characters in it and slowly piecing together backstories. And then that could enhance on a rewatch. You would know, oh, that's why they said that thing and why it was so powerful yeah. at the time. I didn't catch that. I didn't understand why that meant so much to them. And now I do. Um, and that can, you know, that's great for like, hindsight or when you're done watching it that's a certain trajectory and i think it's the most expected and common trajectory Agreed. at the moment uh that we see and so there's something like a uh, so i i'm really it, intrigued and this is really refreshing to to kind of already know the deep feelings we we got introduced to the deep and the trauma before yeah. even starting like that's it's wild to me uh, it, because I'm so not used to it, but I think it, I'm really excited to see how calling upon now knowing that as I watch further episodes. It's so refreshing. It's such a new route. And rather than trying to make guesses of like the typical route you'd take, I that time is being utilized, in my opinion, in a much better way and trying to understand the characters like to the utmost degree like i'm trying to look at aqua and hear what he has to say and the actions that he's doing trying to see how his previous life combined mm -hmm. with the trauma of this early life has molded him to make these decisions because when he's making a decision such as acting like he's re uh, uh, like an agent rejecting his sister it's not just a middle schooler doing this right like that and you're like oh you you're making a stupid decision that could be considered like evil mm -hmm. in one light but it's also i can see your intention trying to help her no like it's somebody who has experienced a lot of life a very tragic life in front of them being Serena with all mm -hmm. that hope, seeing what comes potentially from that mm -hmm. and why, like, I I'm so intrigued to hear the reasoning and growth behind mm -hmm. characters like Aqua. I think uh, you touched, so as you were speaking, the word that I kind of, uh, you didn't say it, but it's what made me think of, it's a word that was used in this episode was reality. Yeah. There's something about already having these things that it almost can keep you in the reality of what you're currently watching and what the characters are saying because you you can immediately identify what the feeling is and why they feel the way that they do. Yeah. And it unlocks a different form of understanding. It, it unlocks a current and in the moment understanding and not a hindsight understanding or a slowly piecing together an understanding. Mm -hmm. Like we are almost like, okay, it's like we were given a play-by-play -play book of what these characters, who they are, what they've gone through. And now everything that we watch, it's like we can be in real time with them. Yeah. And we can understand why they're saying what they're saying, what they're saying. Instead of having to like piece it all together, we can truly immerse in it. Yeah. And um, there is this factor of like Aqua's character for us is so accessible to understand now because we know he superimposed Serena into I. They are the these hopeful, these life-filled, these these girls that he wanted to protect. And him unknowingly to Ruby's past life, this is just a third girl to him uh, that he cares about, that he wants to protect. You know, he wants to see live a long and happy life. Yeah. He doesn't want to get stalked and killed. He doesn't want to see her dejected and hurt. He doesn't want to see her broke at 30 and feeling worthless about herself because she can't get a job as an idol anymore. Yeah. Like, and he, that we already know all of the kind of uh, things that are driving him. And yeah. it's just... It's a very new experience. I, meant, that. I mentioned this in another show we're watching, but I think it's like it probably has a little more credence in this show. And that's even though you're technically being reincarnated, I wonder if at all you inherit anything that isn't physical from your mm -hmm. parents. Uh, I, I think that 
it's tragically understandable that Aqua is one of the only characters in the show that's not living for themselves. Mm-hmm. Like, like we have I who had the menta- had a mentality of like, yeah, I'll help people in my own mind. I'll have a response ready to go that would make them happy. But that was mixed with the disposition of living for herself mm-hmm. and trying to do what she thought was right and make herself happy at times, right? Or make her kids happy at mm-hmm. times. Right now, it's it's nothing but Aqua living for himself uh, for other people and trying to like help other people. Mm-hmm. And I feel like that disposition like it could totally be correlated to eyes and I think you could see a lot of resemblances in both of them. I think um what it opens up is here we have two characters that were reincarnated, but one character got to live a decent chunk of fulfilling life where they helped people they were a doctor they were brilliant they they saved lives they uh were a big part in connecting with other people in their lives and then we have a character that was reincarnated that didn't get to live any of their life and so it is it makes a lot of sense in that regard to me that aqua would be so focused on caring for the other people in this new reincarnated like this new life of his yeah because he already spent a good amount of life that he feels good about. He he liked his past life. He liked who he was. He liked what he did. Yeah. You know? He he was happy. And he got to help people. And so he's already, you know, lived the life. That life has been... Was lived well. Yeah. And so he, going into this life, all he can think about and all he can attach to is those memories of those lives he witnessed that didn't yeah. get to be lived well and ended... In a way, it's like he can't even almost remember you. Hey, dude, you were murdered. Yeah. Like, yes, you're trying to avenge I and you're trying to protect Ruby, but like you were also murdered. Yeah. You were taken away from a very fulfilling life, but he might already feel like, well, I got to live more than maybe they did. Yeah. I or yeah, I think that you're right with that. I one thing that I want to like talk about too that like to connect it with something that could mirror I and her. Uh, ability to even lie, right? I I think in a, in a similar way, Aqua, without even realizing it, is is a great actor, right? I, I it, it's interesting to see the lack of competence play out on screen due to overthinking and maybe thinking incorrectly of what things actually are, because we saw from Aqua like what he thought acting was, what he how he has fallen short in these instances, but if like he took a step outside of himself for a second in him being on the phone with other people, him like telling these white lies mm-hmm. or these lies to, to further his mission. He is accessing a, you know, a talent, a skill that could be reattributed and used in another vein. If that's where his passion laid. It's, it's like, he's more confident lying to, to real people. He's more um, aware of his talent uh, in terms of like in real There's life, no question. real life application. It's, but not on screen. He's not having that translate or he's not uh, believing and having the confidence that that translates. Like we have three instances of him doing a really great acting job. I mean, a surface level with strangers. We yeah. have, uh, well, a surface level with stranger. We have him pretending to be the strawberry productions mm-hmm. representative. Uh, did a fabulous job. The kid's in middle school, but he still appeared to be an adult that could recruit people for a production agency. Come on. And then calling your sister on the phone and she can't tell it's you? Come on. And then... Yeah, go on. The third and the biggest, he has been squandering her opportunities. And she can tell something's off and he's not telling her everything. But he is hiding it. Yeah. Like, he he is acting with her. He, to be able to hide how, how much work he's actually doing behind the scenes in order to kind of keep her from being an idol. I can only imagine, one, how isolating that is. But two, like, morality is going to be a really interesting route this character play, like, mm. goes down. And the confidence, too. Like, it's unquestionable, right? Like, the, in regards to what he's his actions what you what you just listed there's no thought there's no doubt it's just this needs to be done so i'm doing it Mm -hmm. period it's gonna work period because i'm doing it like it's like it's it's so interesting yeah 
And so interesting. It just it definitely opens up the question of it, are there actual abilities, um, talents that have been passed down to them from I? Did he really receive his uh, ability to lie from being born uh, of I, or is this something that he was able to? Did he possibly practice this as a doctor? He probably had to soften some words or maybe it's something that he could have done, but he didn't want to do to patients. He wanted to be real with them. Yeah. It is a skill or talent he could have already innately had in him in his past life. It's a possibility, a, a way to uh, make people feel safe and secure, uh, to be trusted by people. These are abilities he already had to be trusted. And whether he manipulates that or not is something that he could currently be experimenting with. Yeah. But it is interesting to bring up, like, I, I think you said it maybe like five minutes ago, of like, what could actually have been passed down to them from I other than their looks. We get the fact that Ruby has some shortcomings in the talent department, meaning singing. her singing, which I find interesting. I almost figured that she was going to be from how the prologue ended, um, not just a great dancer like we actually got, yeah. but a singer. I love that she's a great dancer, though, because that was like the, you know, that's what we got in the prologue, the mm -hmm. history of that and the fragility. But, but like, I want to talk on Ruby, but the last thing I want to say about Aqua is I love the line from the director in regards to how Aqua's like talking negatively about himself. And he said, only say things like that after you've used all the tools at your disposal. Mm -hmm. That's, dude, I love that. Uh, like everyone has the right to dream. Those were things that were said. I wrote down that Aqua is extinguishing his own flame. Yeah. God, I like that. I like his uh, his premiere editing too. Know. You know, um, <laughs> that was a little that was a little nugget. Just and the for director us. needs to clean up his desktop. There's too many folders. Put them in That's documents more like or something. My desktop than yeah. yours. <laughs> Unbelievable. Um, but uh, in regards to Ruby or Serena, I guess I had I had a thought. Like, you know, when I was like six years old, those, the, the three years probably that I could remember or really were accessible to were my entire life and were important to me. But now that I've lived so many years after that, trying to access what happened during those times seems not necessarily insignificant, but harder to do and resonate with than more recent memories. I wonder if Serena will ever get to the point, sorry, Ruby will ever get to the point where the life of Serena will want to be put behind her and her for her to more focus mm. on her present now. I, I, I under, tr trust me more than anybody. I understand that a life lived with that much pain. You're living way more years than what you actually have mm. because of that trauma. But uh, like I under, I also understand how that, how you can have resentment towards that trauma and pain and through that resentment and pain, there could be a feeling that Ruby gets, like uh, that Ruby gets eventually of, okay, well I'm, I'm, I put that behind me. I'm in a new life now and this is what I'm doing now. And maybe that could potentially even upset Aqua that Ruby's moved on or is trying to live her own life and do things differently, you know, and mm -hmm. Aqua's still haunted by the past and what has happened to him. I really like a few kind of ideas that you were bringing up. Um, the idea that um, as we get older, some childhood memories uh, start to fade. And so when you brought that up, I was like, wow, I do wonder if as they get older, they have uh, less and less access to the memories of their previous lives or less and less um, ability to almost relive them. Not because of like lesser importance or Not, anything yeah, like but that, because but just of how aging. lives are lived. Yeah, aging, how lives yeah. are lived. And it, at some point, will it almost become like a dream to them? And, and so that was a really interesting thought. Um, I do also want to say something else that you were kind of um, talking about, an idea you were kind of talking about. Uh, was this possibility of this question of will Serena, Ruby, will her past life um, affect how she's currently living? Like, obviously, we get a very surface level. Oh, she seems to be trying to live her best. Uh, well, it's not really surface level because we get kind of the flashbacks of why. But it's still very, like, very, uh, I'm going to try to be this super flamboyant, uh, excited, happy idol. But I don't think she's truly worked through um, her trauma of her past life. 
it seems like it could be very possible that she's easily breakable, that she's uh, fragile, actually, and that she's creating this exterior of almost a lie of this really um, excited, confident character, if you yeah. will. And uh, what could her actual, like, not... If she hasn't released her past life, how could that affect her actual dream of becoming an idol in this life? And how could it... How could it affect it? You know, if, if she's holding on so tightly still to it and those feelings that she had, it, is, it, is it safe to say or could you even say that she's not truly living in the moment here? There's just some questions yeah. that can be talked about. Like, obviously, it's really easy to, like, have a lot of deep when we're talking about Aqua. But yeah. I think there's a lot of deep with Ruby, too. Of, I like, think there's potential to go mm -hmm. down that route because I completely agree with you. Like, I, I think that Ruby has a very interesting perspective in this I, I wonder in terms of like that that lie that trying to like live that other life mm -hmm. how like she she very rarely had the like knowledge we do of how introspective I was in terms of those lies mm -hmm. right and it seems at least on the surface to us that Ruby is very just grateful thankful living the most of my life that I've been blessed with yeah you know and it could be that instead of lying for others or lying in hopes that it becomes true. It could be that Ruby is lying in hopes that it comes becomes true. It could be that Ruby is lying in order to protect herself from her past life and make sure that, you know, maybe to hide that away so that she can fully enjoy this. It, it's just a really interesting kind of uh, place to dwell uh, to dwell in and um, delve into. And I think going forward, I'm excited in hope that not only Aqua's character is shown in a in a deep life in yeah. this connection of reincarnation, that that Ruby also gets that I time agree of with attention. You. I, I I hope that it I hope that she does because I could also see who was the character that told us how much Aqua's changed, and when it, when he changed, it Ruby. was Ruby. Mm -hmm. And if Ruby's aware of that, part of her disposition and her optimism could be in hopes that it would help her brother. Mm -hmm. You know, there is um this. Ruby is also very, very aware, and they make sure in the show uh, to to give reality checks. Um, that there's a lot of reality in this, which is really nice to have it in this kind of uh, conversation with lying yeah. and uh, production and, and characters and, and idols. Um, that she is, she and us, the viewers, are very aware of the reality of the entertainment industry. She knows that her mom was murdered by a stalker. That is not news to her. She knows that agencies can be super sketchy. She knows that she has, that, you know, it's going to be hard and that sometimes the idols don't always make it. Like, she's fully aware of all of that. How interesting is it that there, th it, there's so much that mirrors real life. How, how interesting is it that characters who don't have that same disposition as ruby and i almost like are in disbelief and look down potentially on those who do because they can't they they, ha they have to constantly remind them with the reality of the situation don't you think they already know it mm -hmm. don't you think that they've realize that and continue to go on it's like and you're underestimating people, them when you bring up the reality of but it. like it's not like it's like a it's a, it's like they don't understand it like it, to have that knowledge of reality for a normal person is enough to make them realize okay that's not the the route that i'm going to go down I'm, I'm not likely to do it but it, they, they lack this understanding of genuine hope and that will not falter and not change mm -hmm. and yeah i know that it, it's even it's more admirable because of how mm -hmm. often they're reminded with this gloomy reality they're, they're willing to put themselves in the position to be yeah. heartbroken. Yes. And that is like, I think one of the most livingest things ever is to willingly put yourself out there, though everyone has warned you of the repercussions that could possibly happen. Mm -hmm. But you know, there is also that like chance. And there's this difference is Ruby, even with the reality is, is aware that she could get her heart broken and this could could possibly not work out but she's also aware there is that chance and she's going for it yep. and then aqua's the opposite he's 
killing that chance before it can even possibly happen. Yeah. He's like, yeah, no. He's like the, it's like optimist and then like someone who'd probably identify themselves as a realist but might be a little more towards the cynical pessimist. Yeah. But obviously for reasons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He has reasons. Yeah. So good. <laughs> um, my last thing I want to talk about is, I could be wrong with the name, Miyako or Miyako, mm-hmm. um, the mother in this yes. situation, right? One of my favorite characters in this entire show, and I, I didn't... I'm so happy. I'm so happy. I, I didn't expect, you know, the, the manager to leave, but she has not only taken the role of a single mother, but as like a, a boss-ass bitch mm-hmm. who's going to run an entire company, too. She's obviously done well, too, in terms of being a mother. Yeah. Because from all of her flashbacks of raising Ruby... Ruby looks incredibly happy to be with her. And it also does seem like Aqua trusts her as well, even on a friendship level. Like, Aqua was was an older, you know, person when he died than Serena. Yeah. Serena was 12. So to her, Miyako kind of fits as a motherly age for her. Yeah. But to Aqua, he could almost maybe have her on a friendship level, but there's still trust there with both of them that that they they look at her kindly and yeah. that she is a mother to them and they trust her. And I find that to be really beautiful and is really awesome when we remember kind of her introduction as a character into this story, which was this uh lady that this young woman that was uh so focused on marrying this handsome young star yeah. that she willingly married someone she wasn't that into in order to hopefully get a divorce and find a star that wanted to marry her and was willing to like hurt people in order to get that by you know posting eyes pregnancy information and now to see like what she is now like she's a single she yeah. didn't get to marry that young actor she obviously decided to take the reins of the company like it's clear that her husband yeah, at yeah. the time uh, ex-husband he was know, really sad about a dome and not yeah. being able to go to it and she decided she was like you know i'm a boss ass woman boss ass bitch mm-hmm. and i am going to raise these two children and I am going to be CEO of this company and I am going to be awesome and I'm going to put a roof over our heads and I'm going to be supportive of their dreams and I'm going to be their friend and their mom. But I'm always going to remind them about their mother and I'm always going to talk to them about their mother. Is it a and little I'm like, pe- is it a little pessimistic and self-destructive of me to be like, I God, I hope there's none of that divine messenger living in our head still. Like, I, I'm hoping that so, she gets, yeah. like, moral dessert, you Which know? Which is, like... is a part of it, but it's almost, like, the reactions and the things that make her happy. Yeah. I mean, in what we get of the characters, uh, what Agreed. they view internally in their mind. I mean, how she viewed all these moments with Ruby. Yeah. It's, like, it, it almost dispels any of that doubt that it was just because cool. of the divine messengers. There today. was just one line, and I think it's... Uh, talking about something else, but it was when she was talking, the longer I do this job, the clearer it becomes to me. Miracles like that don't happen twice. The reality is things just don't go that smoothly. Besides, besides what? And then she like stops herself. Never mind. Like I was like, that's what like made me okay, think back. So to... what I took from the besides yeah, yeah. was her remembering I's death. I think you're right with it. So it... I think the miracle was I's career and how much she kind of took off as a star yeah. and how how kind of seamless it almost and was. And even for when her. that happened, it still resulted and in And even when you have someone who is like a born to be star, mm-hmm. it can still end horribly. I agree with you, but that's what triggered that get, thought of me it. during the episode. Mm-hmm. I was like, I wonder if that's ever going to come up again. But oh my god, I'm okay. loving the series one so last, much. One last thing. Yes. Kana. 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 We get her at the very end. I Excited. This personality that we're getting a glimpse of now, I just gotta say before we end this, I am really excited to see uh, who she is now. Because the personality we got in her, such... She literally touched Aqua. Yeah. If I was going with what I thought her personality would have been from the previous interaction, she would have never been like, oh, so happy to see him. She would have been like, oh, it's you, you know? See... I was, uh, I agreed, like, Sundere. Yeah, right? that's what I expected. But, like, but, like, deep down, she might be happy, but she's not going to show is it. Is it outwardly. acting? I, like, yeah, I don't know. Saw, like, <laughs> okay, they, they animated her eyes yeah, yeah, in yeah. a very 
emotional way that I didn't feel like was misleading. Agreed. And yeah, the blush can be misleading and all that. And maybe she's a great actor or whatever, but how they animated her eyes when she turns around because she like hears the name. I, yes. I was like, and had the reaction when she finds out he didn't actually join. So to me, it was, uh, yes, it was genuine. I'm with that. My, it, It's not like as contrasty, like cynical or like mean, like acting, I mean, but I'm wondering if she just has this like, ulterior motive of okay you need to be in the acting class so i can prove to you that i'm right. better you know i mean there could still be that in her be like i mean okay if she grew up thinking of him as a rival yeah of course it's gonna be devastating to her if she find if she finds out like this is the person she chose to push her mm -hmm. in her career you know she's probably been like watching anything he's been in which from the director it sounded like he was in a few more other projects as yeah. a kid and even we kind of got him acting in kind of what looked like his middle school self. Uh, so she probably has been keeping up with everything that he's been in. She probably admires his acting skills and really wants him to be an actual rival to push her to be the best that she can be. And I am just very excited to see like who she actually is now and what is genuine and what is a lie. Yep, I'm with you. All right, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And we hope to see you next time.